Okay, let's have a class, and uh, we will talk about uh, immunology. And uh, first of all, by the way, if you look at the e campus, you should know this is what we talk about, the final exam bonus points. Uh, this is what we did every year for eight years since I've been here. 250 to 350 words, uh, 30 points, which is talk about sexual transmitted disease, and you can do all the preparation, address all those three issues, and then write in the classroom. Make sure your handwriting we can recognize. And uh, by the way, this is optional. If you're already very good, you don't have to do it, okay? Uh, your grade is already a solid A, uh, already been doing very well, then you don't have to do it. It's just uh, uh, extra points for you. Okay, so we're going to talk about the immunology. Uh, first of all, what is the immune system of our body? Our bacteria in our body is the immune system. That is harbors 10x, 10 times as many as bacteria as the human cells. And uh, we always have to keep the balance between the host defense and the microbial virus. So what means the host resistance? That is calling the surface defense, phagocytosis, and the real immunity. So we want to go over those. And uh, what means by microbial virulence, which means ability to establish infection, resistant, invasiveness, and ab ability to damage the host. So this is an overall uh, picture, what it looks like. This is a picture tells us what the outcome of the, back of the human body or animal body has been exposed to the microorganism. First of all, you need to know when the bacteria or micro microorganism go to your body, the first thing what they do is colonization but the colonization does not mean it will cause disease. There is a long process to do. Sometimes the colonization, the microbial, will be eliminated immediately. So we call it a transition step. If it's not eliminated, then the next stage will cause infection. Then the infection will have a three different type of the results. Sometimes the microbial could become a normal forum. <laughs> Most of the time will become an infectious disease. That is actually happens really quick. And how severe it is, it depends on your immune system, which is host resistant, and how virulence of the microbiology. And then what happened is it could come out is a inapparent infection, which means asymptom, no symptoms. It could be eliminated. Or it could be end up with something we don't like it, which carrier status. It could be acute, or chronic, and latent. Now, sometimes during the development of these infectious diseases, it also could happen is no symptoms, but the bacteria is hiding somewhere. And you could be a resource of the contamination. And that happens all the time. Um, now, next one, we want to talk about the overview of the host resistant. Um, so for our body, when they attack by the a pathogen, there is something the pathogen has to overcome, is a surface barrier, and then they can be penetrated. Now, regarding the resistance of the host cell, what we talk about immunology, they really have two different categories, which is non-specific and the specific. So we were going to get onto those details later on. Okay. So first of all, we want to talk about something uh, right here. Is when we talk about immunology. Then this terminology comes from the immunity. And this immunity originally is a Latin word, is a immunes. Immunis is a Latin word. Now what's the meaning of the immunity? And you need to know this is basically is repel foreign.
So if the body has been attacking or facing some of the foreign, which means they are not belonging to your body, the immune system is going to start to work. So if it's a bacteria, it's a virus, we try to repel it. But be careful that immune ability has to be in appropriate level. If your overreaction, what will happen is sometimes it's an autoimmune disease or sometimes it's an allergy. Is that right? Your allergic reaction is an overreaction from the immune, immunity standpoint. So the immunology basically is repel the foreigners. Now there is a two different type of the immune immunity. It is now specific which we can say is a universal immunology, immunity. Another one we call it a specific. Um, this we will talk about basically is T cell and B cell. Okay? So here are some of the terminology we can uh, go over these. The immune system, composed widely by distributed cells, tissues, and organs, is recognized foreign substance to neutralize, destroy them. That's the immune system. Now, immunity, ability of host to resist a particular disease or infection. And what is immunology? That is the science behind the immune response. So therefore, there is a two different type of the, uh, the system, which is non-specific and specific. Now, non-specific usually is the first one. It is pretty much universal and natural, and often uh, resistant to any microbe or foreign material. They do not have a, if, uh, so this one non-specific, they lose or no memorization. No memory, you, you can say. And this is typically is the B cell and T cell, they all have the memorization. So that's some, one of the major difference between the non-specific and the specific immune. Okay, so that's something overall. Now we want to talk about some of the uh, non-specific ones. So regarding the non-specific ones, there is the several things we, can main, we, we could mention. Um, number one, we call it a physical variant. So physical barrier has a different level. The first thing first is the skin. The skin surface. And your skin surface, if you are feeling about it, it's a slight acid. It is about the pH 5 to 6. A little bit below the neutral pH. And very important, we have a salt, especially sometimes you do sweating. After that, you generate a salt. Remember a salt? It's about 1 to 3%. It depends. That's going to kill bacteria because the uh, uh, osmotic balance. So we know that the bacteria, if they resist some salt, we call it halophiles. If it's not halophiles, it's not going to resist to the salt. So this is the first barrier. The second barrier we always talk about right here is our mucus. It's our mucus system. That is our second, uh, second barrier. Um, the mucus system, what are you going to happen is they have <coughs> something called a lysine. Lysine will generate. And the lysozyme will generate from there will be to attacking a bacteria cell wall. So if we still remember, this is a bacteria, let's say you have a, if you remember, we talk about this all the time, LHH. <coughs> And another bacteria also, and another also have a glucose right here. So I draw it briefly, okay. We go here, we go O, NH2, we go C, COOH. And the same thing right here, we go NH2, C, 
COOH. And these two right here will be connected with each other. Okay, how are they connected with each other? And the O is right in the middle. This is beta 1, 4 glycosidic bond. And the beta glycosidic bond, the lysozyme, they could, what happened is they could break it. Is that right? They could break this bond. And when this is a basic <coughs> material, uh, please don't speak at the back, okay? It's too, too, uh, too loud. I can't even hear right now. Thank you. So these two, we call it uh, M-mu-re-mic gasid and uh, glucosiamine, if you remember. Okay, NAG, NAM, and NAG, and they are basically is a precursor of peptide glycan. So, this is what's function for the mucus. The mucus will have a lysosome. The lysosome will generate about that. Okay. Next one is like a cilia. Uh, cilia will be usually will be repair or tracking the bacteria and they will repair it. And then the coughing, the cilia and the coughing, those we talk about is respiratory tract. So cilia and we have a coughing. Both will be repelled the bacteria out. And then when we go down to our body, the lower level of the body, what you're going to see is the intestinal. The intestinal had a pH, very low pH liquid, which is stomach acid. The stomach acid, the pH is very low. It's about 1 to 2. Is that right? That's a defense system for killing most of the bacteria. And sometimes we have a bile sauce. We have a bile solution there. And do not forget, in the intestinal area, it is our natural intestinal bacteria, or we say microorganism flora, This is, will be a very strong immune system in our body. There's a lot of the research done by that. Remember, at the beginning, we talked about 16S RNA technology, which is used to uh, do the research to see the diversity of these bacteria, intestinal bacteria population, and uh, the proficiency of some of the bacteria, like bifidobacteria, like lactic acid bacteria, that certainly will favor the immune system, okay? So that's, and actually they play an important role that we just said, so that's intestinal. Then we go into our geonito uh, urine tract, or urinary tract. Then we have is a flushing, okay? Uh, we are going to pee, taking out of the uh, pee of our body, that is a flushing. It's a protection process. And we also talk about the urethra. The female, the urethra is shorter, much shorter than the male. And uh, we talk about three. Uh, female average is about five uh, millimeter, and the male is about uh, 15 millimeter. And uh, this is, uh, sorry, uh, five centimeters, sorry, 15 centimeters. And uh, because of the relatively longer, uh, of, of the larger size, longer size of the urinary tract, so the male is not easy to get urinary tract infection. So that's what we mentioned about. Um, so these basically, from the beginning to the end, we are see uh, from the uh, uh, up to the lower body, it has our natural defense system. 
Now we lost two things we haven't mentioned. Do not forget about our theory, which is coming from the eye, which is conjectival, is also going to generate lysozyme. It's going to cure the bacteria. The same thing comes from here, is a theory. So there is a social survey showing that the female usually have a longer life compared to the male because they're always crying. So the theory comes out, the lysozyme will generate it will break down the bacteria if it's a bacterial infection. But there are some of the social surveys said about that. And another thing is also for the female, the, the vagina tract. Uh, most of the time we see uh, it should be not have a vagina tract. It should be a good defense system because of the lower pH. And they also have sometimes a normal lactic acid bacteria will exist in there so will be prevent the pathogenic bacteria. That's also a defense system. And we mentioned about in the exam three, um, Staphylococcus aureus, if you are using the very absorbed tampon during the period of time, all the moisture will be gone, then the normal bacteria, the defensive bacteria will be destroyed, and then Staphylococcus aureus will be dominant and cause a toxic shock syndrome. So those are the some things uh, we want to mention at the beginning. So that's a surface defense system. Actually, is uh, is pretty complicated, much uh, complicated than we just talked. But these are the defense system from the up to the lower body to protect you from the first line. But unfortunately, most of the bacteria they could be passing these first line. So therefore, our body needs to do something. Therefore, we have another defense, natural defense system, which is actually from the white blood cell. So this is the one we already talked, and uh, this will go back to talk. This is the white blood cell, what we have, okay? Our blood cell right here, you can see, they're coming from a stem cell, myeloid and the lymphoid. When you have C on the left side, on your, right, uh, yeah, on your left side, this is basically is a normal blood cell. You see this is the blood cell, erythrocyte, which is a uh, supply of nutrition. And you have uh, platelets, this is for the blood clotting. So remember, if you have a cut on your skin surface, it has to be uh, groomed at first because of platelets. Now, one of the really uh, material inside of the blood cell to do the defense system is a macrophage, which is coming from a monocyte, and also which is a granulocyte. So what is the macrophage really going to work in? This is, comes from another uh, terminology called the phagocytosis. So this is what happened in a macrophage. This is a macrophage which is coming from the monophage, a um, monocyte. Uh, Once the bacteria come in, they will be to grab it, to track it, become a phygosome. And the phygosome, once they entrapped it, they will be absorbed the lysozyme, and the lysozyme will be there and do the same thing, like what I drawn here, to break down the peptidoglycan of the N acetylmeramic acid glucosamine to break down the bacteria. And finally, you will be lysis, and then you release it. So this is a terminology called the phagocytosis and coming from the macrophage. Now, besides of that, we also had a, a white blood cell. We have a neutrophils, an, an acinophil, and a basophil. So neutrophil is pay much attention, is pay an important role to curing bacteria. As in the field, basically is for allergy and for um, anti-protozoal, and the basal film focus on anti-protozoal. So both, all of these three different type of the uh, white blood cell, we have another name for them is granulocytes. But actually from here, from the granulocytes and the macrophage <coughs> combined together, this is called a white blood cell. 
Now, we really want to talk about here is a, a real immune system, which is B cell and the T cell. That's what we want to focus on, okay? Uh, here, a couple of slides we skipped, but we want to briefly go over. This is what I just mentioned, the non-specific surface defense system. So, uh, conjectivia, lysozyme, flushing action of the TS, respiratory mucus, normal intestinal flora there, then genitory mucus, flushing action of the urine, then you have oral mucus, and you have alimentary tract mucus, stomach acid enzymes, the skin surface. The skin, don't forget about, there's also fatty acids comes out, it also could be curing the bacteria. So that's our non-specific surface defense system. We also call it a physical barrier. And this is our normal human microbiota. And uh, we learned in the whole semester about all these pathogenic bacteria. So you can see it, the nasal area. What are the normal bacteria out there? Some of them we already know. It's a pathogen, Staphylococcus, um, Haemophilus, Streptococcus, Ammonia, corner bacteria. Then in the mouse, you have a streptococcus, uh, leptotricia, venerina. Um, very important thing we want to mention is that these normal bacteria in the body, if they are localized in their original area, then they will not cause a problem. Most of the time, the disease is caused once they translocated. So all these pathogens, we call it a uh, Optimistic passage. So you can understand is if these, those bacteria localized, they will not cause a problem. But they translocated, they will cause all type of the disease because they are looking for opportunity to cause, cause uh, infections. So the throat area you see, streptococcus, staphylococcus, hemophilus, corner bacteria, Neisseria, mycoplasma, and uh, um, in the throat area. So that's why some of you, the tonsil has been taken out. And remember, we did the throat culture to see the, use a candle jar to generate a microallophilic environment, and then to see what type of the bacteria are there. Now, on the uh, skin surface, we have these, ba these bacteria, Staphylococcus, Probionobacteria, Micrococcus, Bacillus. Stomach, usually very few bacteria can survive because of lower pH, but don't forget Helicobacteria polyreal. Remember, what is Helicobacteria polyreal? Why they can survive? Because they have a ureas. Remember, ureas break down, urea become ammonium and carbon dioxide. So neutralize the pH back to 5, 6, they can survive. Now, small intestinal area, basically, uh, Candida and albicans, Lactobacillus, Enterococcus, Bacterials, large intestinal area. What are they really come from? It's a fecal sample. If you get a human fecal sample, you do the 16S RNA technology, you will see the diversity of all these bacteria. You have Bacterials, E. coli, Enterobacter, Lactobacillus, Streptococcus, Clostridium, Clebacella, Candida albicans, Cedomonas agrogenizer, Proteus vulgarius, all these things we mentioned more or less in our lecture and the lab. Now, vagina tract, you see Lactobacillus is dominant there. But if it's unbalanced, the Candida albicans is going to be dominant, then will cause kind of the vaginal tract infection. And the urethra, you need to know urethra, basically they shouldn't have a bacteria, but sometimes microbacteria, streptococcus, even urine E. coli could be get, get involved for the infection. So this is just one to let you know. The normal human microbiota is huge. That is 10 times more than the skin, the, the human cells, and that's important. It's our immune system. If they are translocated and the, uh, lo, uh, the condition changed, they will cause a problem. So that's uh, something before we talk about the detail of the uh, immunology. Okay, so these slides, these couple of slides, we want to, I want to draw on the blackboard to explain to you what are the uh, situation we want to talk. So we talk about the, these uh, um, white blood cell and the skin surface, that's a typical defense system, these are now specific. 
Now here we want to move on to is a real specific immune, which is the T cell and the B cell. So how this start to work? This is everything comes from a um, stem cell. Stem cell will go to a two different lines. If they go to bone marrow, and then the transferring go to lymph nodes, and also could go to the spleen. These we call it an immune organ. Then they become a B cell. B cell line. Now if the stem cell directly goes to a lymph nodes, and then also could be in the spleen, then we're going through a T cell line. And we have a terminology for that. The B cell line, we call it a humoral immune. And the T cell line, we call it a cell mediated immune. Now, the cell um, mediated immune, actually, we could say the T cell. Um, mediated immune, but the most of the time, is T we take it out. That's why we uh, have an acronym called cell mediated immune. Now, what is this B comes out? This is the uh, first time found by a Spanish scientist. It's called Bursa Fabricus. He's the first person to find it. The B cell. Now, where it is, and I make the joke before, it is a muscle surrounding the chicken asshole, and then so that's why we buy chicken carcasses. You always take it out from the back. It's a very soft, fat uh, tissue area. So you take it out. Remember, in the class, lab class, we look at the uh, chicken carcasses. I said that part is you should take it out because that is uh, dominant with B cell line, with, with, with B cell, which is a bursa fabricus. That's what the B cell comes from. Now, what's the major difference between T cell and B cell? Lots of the people will be saying the B cell line is, has a, a memorization capability T cell line do not have, but that is not true. T cell line also have a T memory cell comes out, just because it's short. So I will say the major difference is that a short memory memory for the T cell and the B cell, we have a relatively longer memory. <laughs> but the major difference you should know that the B cell will generate is antibody. And the T cell is not. So there's no antibody generated. Okay? So this is a major difference between that. Now, we also have another terminology for the antibody. You should know it's called immune globulin. Is that right? What will take care about the immune globulin or all these things? IgG, IgA, IgE, IgD, IgM. Is that right? IgG is what we really care about because um, pre, the more do, most dominant resource from the IgG is from the uh, breastfeeding for the baby. Is that right? So that's a basic stuff. Now, then we go ahead a little bit, a little bit complicated, okay? This system, part of that, we call it acquired active immune. No, no, no. They are have you uh, the outline is B cell, T cell line. But what really they comes from? This is really depends on what type of the antigen it is. <laughs> so remember, we have an antibody. The antibody has always have to react with antigen. Then. 
then they can compact with each other. So depending on the size of the antigen, we could talk about that. If this antigen is a large complex, a large complex antigen, what are they going to do? The first thing when they go to the body, they got to go ahead and find is a very strange cell, like a leafy of the tree. This is called a dendritic cell. The dendritic cell have another name, which is called antigen-presenting cell. Now, on the surface of the dendritic <coughs> cell, there is some of the very special structures there. What are they? It's called MHC. What is the name of the MHC? It is major histocompatibility complex. And then, when you have this large, those very large antigen goes there, they will be, let the MHC to recognize it, because the function of the MHC is to recognize foreign, which at this moment is an antigen. Okay, then they will generate what? T cell, which is T killer cell, T uh, memory, memory cell, T helper cell, and sometimes because of CTL, cytotoxin cell, cytotoxin cell, okay, all kinds of cells. Etc. So that's a T cell line goes there. Now, if the antigen is a little bit small, we call it a small soluble antigen. Not going to be that large. It's a smaller one, relatively small. What going to happen? Then that's very simple. It will be go ahead to find is a B cell. Now, what is inside of the B cell? What will be dominant on the surface of the B cell? It will be dominant in some structure like this. What are these? Antibody. These are antibody, so they will be connected to that. Okay, usually they're connected right here. And once they connect it to that, what's going to happen? See what happens is a multi cloning. They will generate more B cell comes out. And then they de later on will be um, differentiated, become B memory cells. Okay, so this is the overall picture. What do we talk about? Acquired immune, active immune. I will have a separate picture sheet printed out for you on Thursday when you take the final exam. So everybody grab one, then you can do this for the final exam review. Okay, it's a very beautiful color sheet. And everything is there for you to understand. But this is a basic information. What is we call acquired active immune? So since we talk about acquired active immune, we want to go a little bit deeper about that. What do, what, what do we really talk about, the active immune? This is lots of the time. I don't have this slides for that, but lots of the time we mentioned uh, um, you learning your other classes. We just want to some of the conclusion here, OK? The whole blackboard here is active immune. But active immune has a different category. 
we have a natural acquired active immune. This is the first category. So what is that? What's all the examples? The examples is very simple. You recover from bacteria or microorganism in infectious disease. So for example, if you recover from the chicken box, then you will actually got the antibody from the chicken box. You recovered from the cold virus, you couldn't get the antibody from the cold virus. But you know that some of them, the antibody is very short. Is that right? Only three months. So we also learned about that if you get from coronavirus, you just got it, then the, the doctor will say, don't get the vaccine right now. Because it's in the three months, you have a natural immune capability. But it's going to be short. So this is the first one, natural acquired active immune. The second category, we call it a natural, naturally acquired passive immune. Now what is that? This is a very simple, is a pregnant woman going to newborn baby. And uh, breastfeeding, okay? Because they have a huge amount of the IgGs right there. So that's a natural acquired passive immune, which means you not want to get it, but you, the baby come out of the body naturally acquired. It is a passive, naturally acquired passive immune. Number three category, since we have a naturally acquired, then we also have an object to that, we have an artificial. Arti artificially acquired, I need to make sure the terminology, the sparing is good. Um, so we have um, artificially acquired um, active immune. This is everybody knows. What is the example of this? Vaccination. Is that right? So you need to take a vaccine. Now what type of the vaccine we make? If you give some example. It could be a dead cell, dead bacteria cell. So what are the examples of that? Polio, is that right? Polio, you have a sugar, uh, sugar like a candy taking in your body, which is a polio. That's a dead bacteria cell. Attenuated. Bacteria cell. The attenuated bacteria cell usually it is most effective because it's still alive. What's a good example? MMR. Measles, mumps, and the rubella. And everybody, uh, foreign students, go to the United States and require you must take that MMR. What shots in your life? <coughs> now what else do you have? Toxic like chemicals. So we have a terminology <coughs> called toxoid. What's the example? BTAV, Hypsaria tetanus A, cellular adipotesis. This is not very strong. This is going to only activate the T cell line. So it's a very short memory capability. Therefore, we need a booster. Remember, we need a booster for DTAP. Now, what else do we have the vaccine? It could be in, um, engineered, okay? Engineered, uh, genetic engineered, and we also learned from, from S protein for our coronavirus vaccine. One of them, uh, Madura or I don't know Pfizer, Madura. One of them come from the S protein of the coronavirus. That's something relatively new. So this is a vaccine. 
So if you get a shot from the vaccination, from the vaccine, you get a shot from the coronavirus that is called artificially, artificially acquired active immune. Okay, and then we have a last category. What is that? Artificially acquired passive immune. Now what's that? We mentioned about in the class, but you maybe forgot about it. This is anti-equine cross trillion toxin. So let's say you have a cross trillion botulinum. Okay, you get a cross trillion botulinum. What are you going to have to do? We said about that you have to do antitoxin and antimicrobials at the same time. And what is antitoxin? It's using from the equine. <coughs> we made it from the equine. So it's an anti-equine cross trillion toxin. And I said it usually shipped from the Atlanta airport in Georgia, in the south-south area. I don't know about West Virginia. Basically, it's pretty much similar. So that is an example for artificially acquired passive immune. Okay. So these are the things we talk about, <coughs> acquired active immune. Now, since we already talk about the, um, the antibody antigen, then we want to spend a little bit of time talk about, I'm going to tear this off, talk about the antibody. Okay, so what is antibody? This is antibody. And, uh, you should learn in your classes uh, what is antibody talks about, what all they looks like. Can you draw the structure about that? It should not be too difficult. The antibodies looks like that. A Y shape. Okay, a Y shape. You have a different line. This is a, we call it the H line. The heavy line, which means and the the side one we call it's a light line, L line. Now what's the difference? Obviously is a protein structure. And also the uh, molecular weight is different. Remember, antibody is actually is a, is a protein. Always remember it is a protein. That's why we call it an immune globulin. It is a protein, okay? So the H uh, chain, usually it's a heavy chain, is about, about 500 amino acids and uh, the 50,000 DA, delta. The molecular weight is very large. Now light chain is uh, around 250 amino acids and 25,000 uh, delta of the molecular weight. Now what are the other structures? How are they connected with each other? They connected each other with SS chain. Okay, what is the SS chain? Disulfide chain. Now, actually, if you look at some of the textbook, it is not really straight. Some of the textbook will tell you it looks like this looks like this, and they are connected with S, 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 S chain, so they look like that. Even inside of the, of the um, H chain, it still looks like that. Then, on the top of this area, this is what we call it a variable area. Now, what is a variable area means? The variable area they will be recognized by antigen. So the antigen is going to go there. The EAG will be there to recognize it. Then we're going to have a reaction. But how about right here on the bottom? This whole heavy area is FC section. This is actually later on could be recognized by a <coughs> macrophage. And we gave them a terminology called opsonization. 
Okay, so that is a basic structure of an antibody. What it, 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 it is looks like. It's a tail, we call it a constant error. So since we talk about antigen, antibody, we want to mention something really special. In our, we talk about microorganisms. Everybody should be very clear. A whole microorganism, a whole bacteria is not an antigen. The antigen which we are talking about is a specific structure. Flagella, for example, a typical structure is for antibody, uh, is for antigen. Whole bacterial cell is not. And the antigen usually is a substance that stimulates the immune response. It could be a protein, it could be a polysaccharide, nuclear gases. Usually, they must be recognized as a foreigner, and they should be the larger, the molecular weight, the better, stimulate better of the immune response. And uh, so, for example, right here, this is a bacterial cell. What are the antigen? I like, like I just mentioned, not the whole thing. Phyllis antigen. H antigen, flagella. O antigen, which is LPS side chain. M antigen, Streptococcus pyogenes. So we want to mention something. Remember when we talk about uh, food safety, we talk about E. coli 0157H7. What is this thing? When you look at the picture, you should know. What is all means? Yeah, you can see it's an LPS side chain. It is an antigen. Oh, we call it a ceramic. What is H means? Flagella. Now, what is 157 and 7 means? It's a serological typing. So what does this mean? This means from the serological antibody antigen reaction prospect, we give this E. coli a major pathogen called HUSID. This is